Hey, this is Nate. Thanks for stopping by Heavy Pedal Garage. In this video, we're going to continue on working with this uh, Endura bumper. If you haven't seen the first video where I completely shred this thing, tearing it down, getting rid of the imperfections, and grinding out the bad stuff, make sure you go back and check that video first. But this is a 70 to 73 Firebird bumper, and we're going to continue on with the rebuild process. So I appreciate you guys for checking it out, and let's get to work. Since the last video, I completely went over this bumper, continued the process that I was working on. I actually sanded it some more, and then I sandblasted it some more, and I actually like the combination of the two processes. Because sanding takes off the rough edges, gets everything down, but sandblasting really lets you get in the nooks and crannies. It actually blows a bit of dust across the surface, and that allows you to really see where those spiderweb cracks are because the dust kind of hangs up in those cracks. So I liked using both of those processes to bring this bumper down. Once it was all sandblasted, we had good clean metal. I went ahead and I put several coats of a Rust-Oleum paint on there. So one of the things that I've realized is that I believe all of the crunchiness on the top part of this bumper was caused from the emblem hole. So the emblem on this vehicle was broken off. And what was left is the two holes from where the emblem was mounted. And I think that this bumper probably sat outside and water seeped in through these holes and caused all of this rust. Word to the wise, if you're going to store a bumper, make sure that you cover it and that your emblem is in place or else you will have some rusty issues. So let's get this flipped over and I'll show you where I ended up on the Endura side. Okay, so we went around and we scuffed up all of our overspray with some 80 grit and then I actually took a wire brush and some 80 grit and kind of roughed all this up. You definitely want to make sure that you've got some mechanical tooth. So then we cleaned it off really good with just some soapy water and a rag. Make sure we got it all cleaned up and now that our prep is done, we'll let this dry and we'll get started on preparing our material. So what we have here is some 3M Easy Sand Flexible Parts Repair. Now, when you shop for this stuff, you're going to find it comes in two different ways. One is in a tube where you can squeeze it out, two-part epoxy, just like JB Weld, and you mix the two parts one to one. And the two tube sizes you can get are a 5-ounce tube, which two tubes, comes in a pack, that'd be 10 ounces total. Or you can get this larger size, which is 9.5 ounce tubes, for a total of 19 ounces. So if you're just looking at doing small repairs, then you can buy the smaller 5 ounce tubes. If you're looking at doing a large repair, like what I'm doing, you definitely want to get the 9.5 ounce tube kit. So in order to find this material, what I recommend is that you go to Amazon and look up Restomotive. And they also have a website, Restomotive and you can order it straight from them there. But they've got excellent customer service and they've also got quite a few other products that you guys can look into. This is really good stuff. You mix it, it's two part, just like JB Weld or some of the other epoxy glues that you might have used. But it's even part A with even amount of part B. And I use my quick sheets just like with uh, filler putty and you know, it keeps the mess at a minimum. So basically, you just mix it up and start to apply it.
stuff is really sticky. But when you put it here onto your surface, especially like right in here, it's wanting to kind of drip down and move with gravity on both sides. So as it sets up, it starts to get kind of tacky. And at that point, you can kind of pull it up into where you want it and it should stay a little better. But you can't mess with it for too long or it starts to drag on you. But like I said, it's gonna take quite a few wipes to get this. And even then, after this is all sanded, I'm sure I'm gonna have to keep on wiping it to get it where I want it. So this is after that first application and before I start sanding on this, I really wanted to give you guys an idea of what it looks like, how it turns out and what the sheen is on this. It is really cool. This stuff hardens in really nicely. It is hard. It's not tacky, um, but it is flexible at the same time, which is exactly what you want for this Endura material. But you know obviously when you sand it this sheen comes off but I just think that how smooth it is and, and how it lays down it's almost got kind of a self-leveling component to it it's just a really cool material I love this stuff so yeah I think after I get this sanded down and roughed up I'm gonna go ahead and focus on building up this area in through here and you can see this area here is kind of setting down in too so I'll build this all up and then once it's all good to go as far as fixing those, we'll go around and touch up all our little nicks and then smooth out a little skim coat where I need to and get her all blocked down. So, I got my block here. It's kind of a little bit flexible so that we can work with the contours. Just wanted to show you how easy this stuff sands. We're going to work it over with some 80 grit. I'm going to do it by hand to start, but then I'm going to switch over to my uh, electric hand sander just to make it go a little faster. But this really sands pretty nicely. Yeah, just like that. It starts cutting it down. It actually looks like it's humped up here a little bit. So another reason I want to kind of sand this down is because I think I built it up there a little bit too much. So we'll get that down and we'll get this part down right here and kind of work around these edges and that way we can decide how much this needs to be filled in right here on the next application. So we're going to keep on sanding here. Turning out pretty good here. Just blasted it with some 80 grit. Just took it down in most places to where I was just barely starting to see some of the uh, original material come through and stop a little bit short of where I know I need to be. Again, we're just roughing it in here. Uh, there's going to be some more applications and we'll kind of finish it off then. That's why I'm using the uh, electric sander. When we're all done, I'll switch the blocks and finish it out by hand just so I can sneak up on it. But take a little bit of 80 grit and rough these up by hand. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mix some more up and get that applied. I'm just gonna keep working it over until I got it ready for uh, hand sanding. It may take me a few more applications, but I'll bring you back when we're ready to get that top end blocked down. I want to show you guys something here. Now that I've got this really close, it's been probably four or five layers of material and I'm starting to try to shape this nose. So one of the things that I'm doing is I'm working both sides equally. All right, so when you sand this stuff, you can see where this is still shiny and this is roughed up where I've sanded. So what I'm doing is doing this side to a particular line like where that starts to bevel up and then I come over and I'm doing this side up to that same line. OK, 
okay, like that. Now I think I've got a little bit of a low here, so I'm just gonna stop because this is starting to come through, the Endura. But then I'm gonna start to work this nose, which I've already done. And I got this going until I start to see it come through. And then I'm gonna work this side the same. So basically, um, stopping right here. So this part's what's getting sanded, and I'm gonna try to match that on this side. That's what I'm trying to say here, is switch sides, doing sections the same on each side to try to get your symmetry. And that'll get us really close. So I'm just gonna keep on going here, and we're gonna get this to where, hopefully on the top at least, we've just got a few little places to kind of fill in a little bit. subscribed yet please consider doing so follow this build along see where this bird comes out in the end if you have subscribed already right on thank you thanks so much for supporting the channel uh, like this video comment down below I love seeing the comments I really enjoy responding to all you guys much appreciated you guys help keep me motivated and thanks again for being a part of all of this if you guys check out the description down below I've got a link to my Teespring store if you're interested in some shirts or a hoodie or a coffee mug or something like that with the logos from the channel on it. Please do so. Special thanks to my good buddy, old buddy, like we're talking middle school, for helping me out with those logos. He definitely hooked me up. Go check out Sean's Rustic Designs channel. Super cool dude, super cool channel. And lastly, I'll just say if you are interested in the Resto Motive, website. I've got a link for that in the description as well. So the next thing we got to do is get the bumper on the car and then we're going to work on getting everything lined up. I'm sure there's going to be some more easy sand to spread to get the contours right and get everything flush. I want this car to be as perfect as I can make it. So thanks again guys. Catch me next time.